I am personally a big fan of British crime dramas. Okay. So I especially like these kind of mystery thriller sort of things. And so I would have watched this anyway. And I think it's it's really cool that you're doing something like this. When this whole project came your way, what most attracted you to it? Was it just that? Was it the story? Was it the character? Was it all of those things? Was it none of those things? No, no, I think it's all of it. I, I like you, love the genre of show, love the genre of film. I love true crime. I love true crime podcasts. I'm the first to like turn on a serial killer documentary. Like I just am naturally drawn to the darker things in life, like the morbid, the gruesome, like, I just want to know, I want to know more. Um, and so I got sent the script and I was really excited because I love Killing Eve. I think it's a very smart show. I think that the balance between the humor, these like crazy characters and the gruesomeness of it all just like, just makes it really unique. And so that's what I loved about Ragdoll too, is that there's, there's obviously all the elements that you said of why we like a show like this, um, but, I think that the writing and how the characters use humor to, to cope with everything around them made it really interesting. And, and then there was the whole thing of, I'm dying to do something different. I'm dying to do something a little left of center. Like I creatively, I actually needed to do something that excited me. And the show just like long story short, just got me so excited. Um, and I love Edmonds. I think originally when I read the script, I was like, oh, she's British. Cool. But but they wanted uh, what I thought was so funny is that they needed like a something to drop into this British crime world. And so like she's she's very American. Um, she's she's I don't want to say she's naive, but she's not jaded by her work yet. And she's still like desperate to do the right thing and desperate to do a good job and show that she deserves to be there. And, you know, she, she walks in and Baxter and Rose obviously have like a long history. Um, and she's just determined to like make her way into this little triangle, you know, she kind of third wheels a lot of the time, but, um, but I, I love that she's not afraid to talk about things. I think that, um, especially in her line of work, people don't, talk about the heart of the matter. They don't talk about feelings. They don't talk about emotions. And Edmonds just sort of leads with her heart all the time for better or for worse. Um, so, yeah. One of the things that I particularly love about British crime dramas is that they, they seem riskier. I've watched some where they, you know, by the end of the season, kill off who you think is the main character, which right. an American show feels like would never do. No. Had you tried to find a show like this, like an American crime drama before finding this, or was it this particular kind of sensibility that feels a little bit more dangerous? Yeah. I mean, I, I hadn't really, I had auditioned for like a couple of other American similar type shows and you're, you're absolutely right. There does feel like there's that added layer of danger because like you said, they might just kill off their main characters. Um, but this show, I think, yeah, definitely teeters on the edge. Like, so what I loved about it is a, from a writing standpoint and directing and cinematography standpoint, they were really inspired by Korean cinema. And you really see that because it feels like a lot of the moments are very theatrical and and crazy. You're like, there's, I, if you've only seen the first two episodes, there's a couple of moments later in the season where you're like, they did that. They really just went for that. Um, and I think people love, love to see that. I don't think people like to see, we didn't want to play it safe, I guess. And I, I really respected that, um, there's some things that are very uncomfortable to watch in our show, which I love. I'm like, okay, give me more. Love this. I love that your character has so many tattoos. I think tattoos are so interesting because they usually all have some sort of story behind them, whether it's a good story or not. Yeah. What was it like to have all of the tattoos? Did you come up with reasons for each one? What do you think they mean to her? And, and what do you think they say about her? Yeah, so I... I actually have a lot of tattoos myself. So like some of them were mine. I have, they're kind of, they're all small, but they're scattered. So mm -hmm. I, I get it. Like you're either a tattoo person or you're not. Like I love them. It's true that once you start, you're not going to stop. 
Um, some of mine have meaning, some were really dumb choices, <laughs> but you know, a lot of mine really mean a lot to me. And I think that with Edmonds, she is sentimental. <laughs> Things really matter to her. I think that all of her tattoos do mean something profound to her. I think that tattoos are sort of a story of your life, whether they're good or bad. Um, and that was always written in the script. Like that was always a character choice for her to be completely sleeved because I think it's, it's also like a generational thing. I think that um, people in my age group Whereas taboos used to be a little taboo. Now everyone's tattooed, especially mm -hmm. in LA. Like you don't see someone my age without a tattoo. So I think that it says a lot about who she is um, and her generation. And um, there is one tattoo in particular that, I don't know if you've seen this episode, but that does have a lot of weight and a lot of meaning to her. And it actually has to do a lot with her arc later on in the show. Um, so she doesn't have tattoos just to have them. They actually do are sort of incorporated into the storyline later on as well. We also learn pretty quick that clearly she has a relationship with an ex-girlfriend that has made an impact on her because it's, yeah. it's brought up a couple of times. So yeah. will we learn more about that and why it, it does seem to have had such a lasting effect? Oh, yes, you will. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> it actually um, has a lot to do with why Edmonds ran away from, literally ran away, figuratively ran away from everything. Um, I think it's why she chose the career path she did, it explains why she's in the UK. Um, and while we were filming episodes one through three, like I knew that something had happened in Edmonds past that has really changed the trajectory of her life and changed probably at like a, like at the core of who she has changed who she was because of this experience with this person. But I didn't know the weight of what it was until we were shooting the later half of the show. Um, it's a lot, but yes, you will find out, you will find out why, how this person plays into, into it all and why Edmonds has trust issues and all of that. <laughs> what was it like for you? Like, what kind of a reaction did you have once you did have those answers about her, but also once you, you know, had the answers about this crime and what was going on? Like, what was what were your what, without spoilers? What were your reactions to learning all of those things? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always so fun to not know what's coming next. To sort of go script by script and get all these little puzzle pieces. Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely what Freddie did so brilliantly with the writing is he just takes you down so many paths and it's why these shows are so great because you're like, oh, it's definitely this person. And then you're like, oh shit, no, it's definitely this person. Um, and what's great is that it's just the suspicion of everyone. And then not only as an audience member, but then you see Baxter, Rose and Edmonds like get really suspicious of each other and you see their trust just go out the window. And um, I mean, I, I, Freddie is so, so, so brilliant at what he does. And I, I don't know how he even, I need like a flow chart for our show <laughs> to understand everything. But towards the end, I think, I think people will be really satisfied with, with who it is. Um, it's a journey. Yeah. This is a, pretty gruesome case that's playing out over these episodes. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction to reading it in the scripts? And then how did that compare to seeing it actually visually brought to life as you did those scenes? How does it, how does it feel when you do stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, reading it is one thing. I, like I said, I'm like, yes, give me more and more gruesome. Like I eat it up. I love, I love it. Um, uh, seeing it was really disturbing, like seeing the rag doll for the first time, not going to lie. It, it just looked, it looked real, you know, and that's obviously the whole point. And I know the people that, uh, the, the uh, group of, I don't know, uh, their names, the prosthetic company that made the rag doll spent many, many, many months making it look the way that it did. I mean, the detail of it too, like it actually looked like people sewn together. So obviously we're filming a show and I know this isn't real, but there is an element of like everything we're doing like has 
there is a, a little bit of reality to it. Like there have been some dark people in the world who have done similar things to people like this before. And um, yeah, it was it was a pretty memorable memorable day of filming when we when we actually saw the ragdoll. Like like we had physical reactions to it. Like we were like it was it was intense. But um, I think that's the whole the whole point though. So that's good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, th this show, with as dark and as gruesome as it is, also does have a sense of humor. Do you feel like the humor often comes out of a need these characters have to keep things light when their job is so dark? Yeah, yeah. I mean, off I'm just fascinated that people actually do that for a living, because how do you live your life? How do you go home to your kids and your your family? How do you leave your work at home. And I think that the only answer is you have to do it through humor. You have to keep things light. It has to be a coping mechanism. Um, at least for the characters in the show, I think that that's just how they deal with this day-to-day -day case that they're dealing with, all the cases that they deal with. Um, but what what's so great about the writing is I don't think that the humor, I feel like it's perfectly like woven into um, the dialogue and the tone of the show. It doesn't ever feel like we're trying to take away from what's happening. It just is very realistic. I think like as humans, that's what we do. We make light of things because otherwise, how else do you deal with it? Have you had conversations about how this show could continue? Is this something that, you know, a character that you're hoping to play for a bit longer? Because she so is many so years. Awesome. So, so many more years of it. No, you know what? I... I think we end it in a way that's really strong and satisfying, but, but of course, I mean, of course we would love to, to keep going. I think that I so loved working with Talisa and Henry on a level that I had not experienced before. I have so much respect for them. They work really hard. I learned they're all, they're both theatrically trained and I'm not. And so I just felt like I learned so much from them and um, Sally, Freddie, everyone involved. It was like, just so special to me. So, I mean, personally, I would love to keep playing Edmonds. I would love to live in this world more. Um, I think the possibilities are kind of endless with a show like this. So we shall see. <laughs> I think it's so interesting the the parallel between something like this and doing something like Pretty Little Liars where you also did Dark Material. You did this, you know, season these seasons long mysteries. And did you ever think about that and think about any connections to how different you are now than you were when you did that and, and how there is like a similar sort of feeling yeah. to the content? Yeah, there there is, um, there definitely are some similarities. I mean, I think the girls in Pretty Little Liars, they kind of took pride in being the town detectives, like the, un, the unofficial detectives because the, police force in that town was crap. They didn't do anything. Um, so, I mean, obviously PLL skews a lot younger, yeah. a lot less realistic, um, but, but both of the shows live in like a heightened reality. Um, but, but Ragdoll feels, um, I'm obviously way older than when I was, when I did PLL, but Ragdoll feels like a new chapter in my life, just as far as where I'm at personally, where I'm at in my career. Um, but, but yeah, there are like certain strings that sort of make them very similar. I think that the people who watch PLL who have grown up with me are old enough to appreciate a show like Ragdoll. So hopefully they'll be into it. <laughs> yeah. How different do you feel as, as an actor? I mean, do you feel like you've just learned so much more since your time doing that show to where you are now? I, I mean, I do. I think that being on a show that went as long I mean, we went for almost eight years, a hundred and a lot of episodes, 160 episodes. I mean, that was a time in my life where I really honed my craft and knew like, oh, I actually love what I do. This is great. And I learned all the technical aspects of, of like how to hit a mark, how to find your light, like all of those things. Um, and towards the end of that show, obviously, I think we were all ready to like move on and try different things. Um, and I've been just really fortunate enough that people have allowed me to to dip my toes in in different characters and like with everyone involved with ragdoll like I was so grateful that they believed in me for this role and were like 
this is so different for you, but we believe you can do this. And like, that meant so much to me because I know I can do all these things, but like getting people to actually see you in that light, like it was really important to me. And like, this is a turning point in my career, I feel like, because I could keep doing like romantic comedies and things like that all day long. And I really enjoy that. And that's really fun. But as a artist and as an actor, like I actually creatively need to do things that challenge me or it's just not fun for me. So, so I'm at the point now where I, I'm like willing to take risks. I'm willing to like fail if I need to, to, to just get excited. I think like as an actor, you, I can't do the same thing over and over again. And, um, and so yes, to answer your question, I do feel like a different, a different actor now because I, I, I've learned and I've grown and I'll continue to do that with experiences like this. So lots of gratitude over here for sure. Well, thank you for talking to me about the show, the character. She's Aww. awesome. I'm, I'm definitely excited to take the rest of her journey this season. Great. Thank you so much. Really good to see you.